Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Father's Day to all you wonderful daddies out there. Um, you're in the house of the Lord, Dixon, Tennessee, Sunday morning, and we are so glad. I am especially glad to be with you this morning. God has blessed me and kept me, and I thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your prayers and your cards and your well-wishing and your encouragement. It has been an absolute strength, and we have received so much from, from the body of Christ in every way. I mean, uh, folks cooking and cleaning and sending cards, and we are truly blessed, and we truly appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. You can take us to the Lord, sweet love. Why don't you pray and ask the Lord to bless this service? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be able to be in Hallelujah. your house and in your presence. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We ask you, Father, that every word said, yes, every song yes. sung, would be by the unction of the Holy Spirit to the upbuilding and edifying of your church. Oh, Father, hallelujah. as we commit spirit, soul, and body into your hands, that you would have complete control. Father, as we submit ourselves under the mighty Amen. hand of God, Amen. we pray that we would minister life, and love and health to your children, Lord. We yes. pray that you would touch each and every one, and we thank you for what you have done for us, and we know what you've done for us, Glory. you will do for others. Father, as we commit this service into your hands, we thank you, amen. praise you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. How good it is to have Bobby Jean able to be in service it's good and to be here. Uh, she's doing great yes the lord's helping her uh, uh you know you get some pain in rehab <laughs> and especially if uh, they tell us if you saw what they did to you <laughs> when they do the hip surgery there's no wonder your muscles are sore <laughs> and uh but she's uh doing so well and we appreciate yes. that and bless the lord for it yes. hallelujah yes and uh, pray that everyone uh, listening is doing good. Yes. And that the Lord's blessing you. Happy Father's Day yes. again to all the uh, fathers out there and to the ministry. Happy Father's Day to the few fathers. Yes. That's what Paul said. Yes. Many instructors, but few fathers. Yes. And uh, I guess the reason why he <clears throat> put that distinction there that, well, that word few is that uh, the vast majority of uh, instructors are uh, more concerned about themselves. Fatherhood is about caring for others Amen. and giving yourself for others. And so we thank the Lord for all the ministry out there that are doing that, putting the people first and serving them. Uh, we mentioned that uh Friday night in the in the reading room, how important it is to understand our position. Our position is waiters. Uh, we wait upon the Lord. He gives us the food, and we take it right from the kitchen to your table. Hallelujah. Without any contamination. And uh, that is our goal, and that is our desire, to give unto you the pure, undefiled presence and word of the Lord. Yes. So this morning, I believe we're going to really feel that in our midst, that God is with us and that uh, there's a purity of the word. So uh, join in with us this morning as we sing uh, songs unto the Lord yes. and let the words of the songs minister to you yes. and be lifted up in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sing uh, this song right here, honey. Um, I will arise and go back unto the Father. This is a servant song uh, that lets it know why we're rising back unto the Father and uh, why we are giving our life uh, for the Father. It's so that we might bring life unto all people. Amen. I will arise. I don't think 
I'm ready to say. I will arise and I That is another song. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's try my song. Do you know my song? Okay to follow? I'll follow. I'll do my best. <laughs> I saw that and I thought, oh, there's the song that I wanted to sing. <laughs> I will arise and I Pay the price. It's gonna take me a minute of his great call, and I'll give my life. Yes, I will, Lord, for creation's call. Until I see his life, his life revealed in all, I will rise. Now give. Lord, hallelujah, until I see his life, his life revealed in all, I will arise, and I'll give my Prize 
of his great call and I'll give my very life yes, yes, yes I will for creation's call until I see his light his life revealed in all. Amen and amen. So be it, Lord. So be it, Lord. Hallelujah. We will arise in the name of the Lord. Rise up in your temple, almighty God. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Those who wait upon the Lord. Another key. Mm -hmm. uh, they that wait upon. Hit a key and I'll try. They that wait they upon, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. And not faint. 
teach me Lord Please teach me Lord To wait Hallelujah Oh hallelujah we want to see you, Lord. We want to see you, Lord. Andara mamando, ya que rian de damas. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. How glorious it is, yes, Lord. <laughs> how wonderful to mention your name, O oh Lord. <laughs> we want to sing a love song yes. to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> We want to bear our soul before you, O oh Lord, and give you glory. Give you glory, oh Yes, yes, Give you glory, give you glory. May the Lord be high yes, yes, and lifted yes, yes, yes. up. There's none like unto you. Jesus. Yes, yes. Only life I have is in the Father. He gave me this life that I may light this darkened world. The victor's crown. I am the appointed one, and now I come forth to do his life. I can't remember the rest of the words to that. The only life I have is in the Father. He gave me this life that I my life, this darkened world. Victor's crown I wear I am the appointed one And now I go forth To fulfill the master's plan The victor's crown I wear Oh, I am the appointed one And now I go forth to fulfill The master's plan The only life 
I have is in the Father. He gave me this life that I might light this darkened world. The victor's crown I wear I am the appointed one And now I come forth To fulfill the master's plan The victor's crown I wear Oh, I am the appointed one And now I come forth To fulfill the master's plan Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Glory, 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 glory. We thank you today, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The cells of my body speak for a new life. Right here. Every atom radiates his glorious light. So rejoice, oh. Let the words minister. The cells of my body, amen, Lord, speak for a new life. Every atom radiates his glory of life. So rejoice, oh. Cells of my body, believe it, speak forth a new life. Amen, amen. Every atom radiates, yes, Lord, his glory a slide. So rejoice, oh. I'm a new man walking. I've never walked. I'm speaking this to you, Phyllis. The cells of your body speak for a new life. Every atom radiates his glory. So rejoice, oh, oh, at the sound of my voice, I'm a new man walking, 
I've never walked before Oh, I'm a new man walking I've never walked before Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah And I ran 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 I feel this morning uh, there's healing taking place. Praise God. And uh, I just know that in my spirit, uh, the cells of our bodies are being uh, permeated by the spirit of the Lord. We are basically at our very most base unit of life is a cell. And, um, uh, and that is where the work of healing takes place. If you get healed of a tumor, uh, your cells rearrange uh, to destroy that tumor. It's a supernatural event super natural God has put in certain natural processes in our body that when moved upon by the spirit yes and they become super they're uh, they're still natural they're not glorified a healing doesn't glorify you but <laughs> It is a supernatural event. And, uh, and I just love the fact that scientists tell us that our cells were designed to live forever. Yeah. Scientists say that. And of course, that's in the word of life and immortality. And uh, I just love it that science, uh, which, which is, for the most part, uh, they don't mess around with God at all. It's all uh, laboratories and test tubes and, um, and uh, things showing up on uh, uh, computers, uh, but uh, they have no in inclination to try to look at that as something of God. But they still always are saying things that confirm what the word is saying to us. Amen. And one of those things is that we are going, these, these vile bodies, these corruptible bodies will be turned into glorious bodies. Glorious, full of glory. Amen. Uh, so, but this morning, I feel like we need to understand healings taking place. I don't care if you feel one goosebump. Uh, I don't care if you uh, just sit there and don't do anything. Uh, it's a God event. Thank you, God. I said it's a God event. Thank you. And, uh, and things are happening in us that we have no way of knowing. We don't know what all the Lord has done in our body. We don't know how many cancer cells he's destroyed already. Amen. We don't know how many heart cells he's strengthened without us even knowing it. Uh, God does things on his own. Yes. He doesn't just wait for you and I to pray about it. <laughs> he does things on his own. If you're meant to be here in the natural, yes. if you're meant to live your years that God has given to you, yes. 
then nothing on this earth can take you out. Absolutely. He will do whatever is necessary yes. in order to keep us alive. Yes, he will. And uh, so I don't worry about uh, old age or death or anything like that. Uh, and that truly is living day by day, minute by minute. Yes. Uh, I'm alive right now, and that's all that matters. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm, I'm speaking forth the greatness of God. Yes. That's all that matters. Yes. Uh, who knows later on if I uh, get run over by a train? I don't know. But uh, this, this is living in, in, in faith and, and in trust in the Lord. But uh, be expectant. Be, believe. I brought out Friday night. It's still not out of order for us to say, believe. Hallelujah. Faith is one thing. Belief is another. Do you, ever, do you understand that? Um, I no longer live by my own faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Just what I got done saying is the fulfillment of that verse. I don't worry about things. I don't try to sit and, and, and uh, dream up all these doom and gloom scenarios. Uh, each day we live for that day. It is sufficient that day to glorify the Lord. Amen. That's, that's uh, faith of the Son of God. Believing, believing comes from another place. That means let God be God and let his enemies be scattered. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can just let God be God. Now, I believe in a mighty, mighty God. That's my belief. And, I li and, and when I start talking about things like healings and restorations and healing of Alzheimer's and healing of, of, of diseases of the heart, and uh, healing of, uh, of bacterial diseases, I am saying I know that God is that kind of God that if he says something to me, I believe it. He said it, I believe it, and it's so. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to believe him. Amen. We're going to believe him that we are going to be healed. O Karapa Bahaya. And why not? Why not be healed? Why not be restored? Amen. Hallelujah. Charlotte wrote a song, uh, If I Clothe the Little Lily. What a beautiful song this is. Because you, you, you don't think about it, but when Jesus said, uh, I, I, I am aware of every sparrow. Yes. And... Uh, and I have clothed the little lily, the lilies of the field, but I will clothe you even greater. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, so uh, this is a beautiful song of healing, of restoration. Concentrate on it. Focus on it. Let each word enter into your being, into your spirit, your soul, and your body. If I clothe the little lily, why worry what you wear? And if I feed the lonely sparrow, how much more for you do I care? If I part this chilly waters, let you walk on holy ground. Know ye not, I shall perfect you as I am. I believe it. I believe it. If while in the fire I'm with you, 
Why hold on to the dross? And if I've called you to higher places, then why drag along that old cross? If I've never failed nor faltered, why doubt the truth you have found? Know ye not, I shall perfect you as I am. I believe it, Lord. I'm the peace, I'm the joy, I'm the righteous one. Yes, you are, Lord. I'm the bread to feed the hungry, and I make the old things new. I give life to all who hear me, and my love to all. That ye shall see me as I am. I believe it, Lord. I believe it, Lord. If I clothe the little lily, oh, hallelujah. Why worry what you wear? And if I feed the lonely sparrow, how much more for you do I care? If I part death's chilly waters, yes you do, Lord, let you walk on holy ground. I shall perfect you as I am. If I'll lend the fire, I'm with you. He's right there with you, dear one. Why hold on to your draws? And if I call you to higher places, then why drag along your old cross? If I've never failed nor faltered, why doubt the truth you found? ye not, I shall perfect you as I am. Lord, help us to know it, to know it. I'm the peace, I'm the joy, I'm the righteous one. I'm the living one. I'm the bread to feed the hungry. I make the old things new. And I give life to all who hear me. And my love to all abound. Not that ye shall see me as I am.
Hararamando Riando, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, we serve, what a mighty God, we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, we do. Thank you, sir. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Hey! Well, now what a mighty God we serve. Come on, Bobby G. What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> the angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on now, sing it. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God. We serve. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, Bobby Jean asked me every once in a while, why do you do that? And I said, do what? She said, just go off somewhere. And, <laughs> and, and I'm trying to harmonize. And I told her, I said, I got to sing it like I feels it. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> I know it. Okay. <laughs> You never can tell. No, you never know. I never know, so, you know. Yeah, amen. <laughs> you know, folks have said, I never know what you're going to do. And I said, well, neither do I. <laughs> Just, yeah. Well, you know, we're in a day where we have to have that kind of expectation. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can't just keep thinking that God's going to do the same thing over and over again. No. And I'm looking for some things to happen like that. Yeah. Where all of a sudden somebody just gets out of character and gets out of <laughs> their own mind and their own nature and something glorious happens. We've seen it in the past for oh, sure. Oh, man, yes. But, you know, the past glory isn't the, the glory uh, that God uh, is moving in right now, and he hasn't been for a while. Uh, your latter rain movements were, their meetings were, the most supernatural meetings that there's ever been. And uh, healings took place left and right. Yes. Um, the, um, uh, uh, the tent at night would glow, according to eyewitnesses. There'd be a supernatural glow coming from the tent after the meetings. Uh, I've heard all kinds of uh, wonderful uh, almost unbelievable things that God did Absolutely. during the latter rain movement, which was um, in the in the chronology of God, uh, latter rain was uh, after the infilling and the Pentecost took place in 1906 or whenever, <laughs> and um, and then Pentecost swept the world. Latter rain was a very sovereign move of God where something happened in a Bible college up in Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, and um, it was an, a supernatural event. The students started seeking God they started receiving revelation of God and the spirit would lead them to lay hands on one another 
prophesy over one another. And uh, the, market, uh, the, the mark of latter rain was praise. And they would spend day and night praising and singing as, as we do ourselves even today, at least I do, singing the praises of the Lord, yeah. uh, singing a new song unto him. That was birthed in latter rain. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, Pentecost became so organized and so uh, corrupted that uh, it started losing its glory because of the way they handled it. Yes. God could no longer bless it like he did at the beginning. Amen. Uh, and and so then we came into the revelation of the the kingdom of God, and we uh, started becoming more revelatory. But all along, God has performed miracles, but not in the way that He did in the uh, earlier parts of Pentecost and of Latter Rain. Uh, but now we're coming into tabernacles and Pentecost had flesh in it, uh, which, which it was what the leaven stood for in the feast yes. that flesh would be involved in it. But now in the third and final feast, the great feast, the feast of entwinement, feast of booze of tabernacles. We now see God filling the house with his glory, tabernacling with, with, with mankind. And he is filling us with himself. So our bodies are being uh, no longer focused, the ministry is no longer focused on healing lines like we did in Pentecost. We could, we could start calling a, for a healing line and we could pray for people and no doubt miracles might happen, would happen. But uh, I did that. Charlotte and I did that in our ministries. I know Bobby Jean did that. And, um, and, and I'll tell you for a fact, uh, healings that took place uh, would um, leave and the sickness would come back on. Uh, people that got healed a year later would be in the line for the same thing. So you know that's not the answer, just to get healed. Amen. It's a relief though. Yes. It gives you relief and does glorify God. But we see something greater than healing. And until we come into it, thank God for the healings. Amen. Thank God for the supernatural happenings yes. of God. Yes. Uh, but, there, but we are in a day of the Lord where God is wanting us to lift our eyes a little higher and see a realm of, of complete wholeness, body, soul, spirit. That's backwards in the order. Spirit, soul, body. Begins in the spirit, goes into the soul, and the body is the last Amen. thing to be made whole. So that's why this morning I feel like some people need relief. Yes. And maybe they need to know that God is big enough to do that. Yes. Amen. I have seen uh, unbelievable things in God uh, right before my eyes. Uh, and um, I have had supernatural things happen to my own self. Um, I was, uh, Charlotte was in a place where, and I've said this other times, but I'll say it again this morning. Charlotte was at a place where the doctors thought that she was dying. And they could not figure out what was wrong with her. She couldn't eat. 
uh, she had trouble swallowing her own saliva. Uh, a, a, a friend of ours who was a registered nurse, but she was also well-schooled in naturopathics, she uh, was rubbing olive oil on her body to keep her alive. And I remember I was in our bedroom and there was uh, Mary Helen Thompson and Betty Hooker was there along with myself. And we were all, the lights were down and we were just seeking the Lord, uh, praying constantly in tongues and, and words of the Spirit over Charlotte. And all of a sudden, I was taken out of my body. I know you won't understand that if you aren't familiar with what God can do. But I left my body and I entered into Charlotte's body. My spirit did. I was leaning up against the wall, standing up. And my body, nothing happened that anybody would even be aware of what was going on, except I was gone. I was in her body. And of course, this isn't a natural thing. This isn't something that you can relate to very well in the natural. It sounds more science fiction. But when I was caught into her body, the Lord spoke to me and said, you are going to preach to the organs of her body and I'm going to send you to each one individually and then you are going to have a conference with them all and you're going to speak to them as a whole and you're going to ask them a question and I did I remember going to each, I don't remember all of it, of course, after all these years, that, that's been 40 years ago, but uh, I remember the thing that shocked me was that the organs had their own personalities. They were like people. They communicated with me. And I remember some was feisty and some were very docile. And I ministered unto them the word of the Lord, each and every one of them. And I remember some of the resentment in some of them because they said, I'm doing all I can do and, and others are not doing their part. And I'm trying to keep us alive. And I'm doing all I can do and I, I don't know how much longer I can keep doing it. So I ministered strength to them. I ministered unto them the Lord. And each and every one of those organs, I had an audience with them. And I remember the liver uh, I'm sorry, the gallbladder was so arrogant and so awful. And, uh, and, um, and I remember after I left off from preaching to the gallbladder, I thought, that's a real problem. That's a real problem here. And so when I had the conference together with them, and I ministered to them about how in the scripture, the eye cannot say to the ear, I have no need of you. Each part member of the body is, um, is, is uh, not just important, but um, vital. And that you all are a body together. And if you aren't doing your part, the body will suffer from it. And I'm minister. I'm getting some amens and hallelujahs. I'm telling you in the spirit. Sounds crazy. I know, but I I don't care. I don't have a reputation to ruin. <laughs> People have thought I was crazy for a long time. But I'll tell you. And I went to each one of them, 
And I asked them, are you willing to live for Charlotte? Affirmative, 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 affirmative. And I get to the gallbladder and the gallbladder says, no. I am not going to live for Charlotte. And I could tell that it was uh, something very, very wrong with that organ. It had gotten into a disease. And then the Lord brought me out. And I came back into my body Aware, aware of my body. And uh, I was cold. It's like I was, like my body had been dead or something while I was gone. I was cold. Uh, I was in uh, bare feet and uh, they looked bluish. And I was shaking, you know, and Betty and Mary Helen were around me saying, Bob, Bob, Bob. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? They said I wasn't hardly even breathing. And uh, I said, yes, yes. They said, what happened to you? What happened? And so I told them, I said, it's the gallbladder. The gallbladder is the problem. And we went to Charlotte's doctor. And he said, well, we did our labs. But he said, I'll tell you what. We're going to do exploratory surgery on her. And we're going to look at her, her organs and see about it. And so uh, they did. They saw the gallbladder was diseased, took out the gallbladder. And the thing about it is that when they sent it off to the lab, uh, the lab on its report, it said, this is the most diseased gallbladder that we have ever had in this lab. Wow. It was totally diseased. And uh, there's a realm, the reason why I'm saying this, there's a realm we know nothing about yet. And God is going to start, he is starting right now, to make it available if we believe. Now, our job is to stay balanced in the truth. These are true things. But anyone can go and slip off from the truth into a lie. I believe on life on both sides of the river. But I don't believe in calling up the dead, right. holding seances, uh, communicating with mediums. Uh, and people have done that. The truth stands alone. And then everything else comes off from the truth and tries to imitate it. So as sons of God, as those who are called unto the third day, we have to pray for wisdom and understanding and for the right spirit and to stay pure and stay in the right spirit. I say right spirit because there are spirits of deception yes. that can influence us yes. and try to draw us aside. That is what the adversary is all about. Yes. That's why God created him was so that his job is to uh, lie, steal, and try to destroy everything that God is doing. And his job is to test us to uh, do battle with us, to try to deceive and lie and cause us to go another way than what God wants us to go.
Now, to be sure, God is going to watch over us. So there's not a fear in that. It's just that you have to understand that it's a real thing to get drawn aside by some things. But we've got to be able to walk that line because these things have to be expressed in the earth in their pureness so that they aren't corruptible, so that these things are not taken off and try to cause people to be antichrist concerning Jesus. And, and uh, uh, there, there, there is a power in the suke, suke or the psyche. Those two words intermingle. Suke, soul, which has to do with the mind, and psyche, which has to do with the natural mind. And there's a power in that. Divination is in that. Simon, right, the magician, in, in the book of Acts, he, he was operating under di, uh, uh, divination. Yes. And there are those in this world, witches, who, who call themselves witches, who call themselves warlocks, who, uh, who entertain dark forces and demonic powers and try to use those powers to influence people. I know people that have been brought under bondage of someone and the person swore that they invaded their dreams. They uh, appeared in their, uh, in their house, in their bedroom even, yes. and, uh, and influenced them in horrible ways. Yes. And they had given themselves to that. And once you give yourself over to that and you entertain that, then there has to be a true deliverance out of that. Yes. But all of that is real, dear ones. It's not a fiction. Yes. It's not you saying, oh, well, God's, uh, I'm all about God. Well, of course we're all about God. But that can happen to anyone who starts to entertain the wrong spirits. Yes. So we want to be sure right now that we're, Scripture based, amen. Amen. That we are based in the Word. Yes. Because that, as far as I'm concerned, is the only true uh, trustworthy guide for us right now. Right. Because if you just go by people saying, oh, well, God will teach you everything you need to know. Right. Really? I know some of those people, and they are <laughs> fruitier than a fruitcake. They are the granola bunch, like my wife says. Nuts, fruits, and uh, figs, I guess. I don't know. Flakes, fruits, and nuts. Oh, yeah, God's talking to them, all right. Their God is talking to them. But that's why I have not left the Bible, I have not left the scripture. Uh, I am uh, making a point to going into the Greek with it because I believe it gives us a, a even deeper understanding of the of what the true uh, uh, intention of the writers of the New Testament are. But uh, the the scriptures form for us a guideline that we can follow. Now, God is not bound by anything. Amen. And that's why I'm saying all this this morning. And I hope you're mature enough to hear me. We are approaching a day. We are approaching a time that God is going to start doing things you're not going to have chapter verse on. I can't find too much chapter verse on what I just told you about me entering into bo uh, Charlotte's body. I could probably really dig in there and uh, get into the Greek and the Hebrew <laughs> and try to find an insinuation of that. And that's why I don't say that kind of thing very often. But when I'm wanting, feeling led of the spirit, there's some supernatural things yes. are going to start to take place. Yes then we have to understand that there's a realm that we are of. We come from that realm. 
We come from that realm. Our spirit is very comfortable in that realm. Our spirit was with the Father from the beginning. That's why I know that every man's spirit out here, when, uh, when, it, when the scripture says in Hebrews that uh, about the new covenant and that there's coming a time when you will not teach every man and his brother, know ye the Lord, for they all will know me. I know the fact is I know that every man has the ability to hear God in his spirit, but his spirit is buried underneath the carnal mind and the natural mind and the soul and all of its duality and, uh, the spirit is not given any opportunity to be able to express God in them. And if it ever gets that chance, they usually take the credit for it. <laughs> oh, I had a premonition. Aren't I something? Oh, you know, I had a feeling about that. Aren't I something? And all the while, see, every man's got a spirit that knows things especially the things of God. Amen. So this morning, I'm feeling like, uh, like a uh, prophet warning us about things to come and that this is the time right now for us to let God be God yes. and uh, to walk circumspectly is what the scripture says in the King James I don't know what that says in the Greek. But to examine, be aware. You know, that's one of the things of uh, between being alive and being dead. The dead are not aware. The living are aware. Alert. They're conscious. And they're able to relate to their surroundings, and to what's happening in their life. Uh, and um, the dead out here are not aware of God at all. So they're doing the best they can by their own uh, limited expressions. Uh, but we who have been made alive, we who once were dead but are now made alive, are able to hear and to understand the things of God and to rightly divide them and to discern them and have them in their right place. God is adding unto us. Each one of you, day by day, God is revealing more and more of himself. So he's adding to us, Zach, all the time. But what he adds to us has to be given an opportunity by God to place it in the right place in all of this complexity that we are. We are a complex creature. We're complicated. Uh, and, uh, and things are being put in us, but if they're in their wrong place, then they're not going to be speaking life to us. So every once in a while, God has to arrange things in us. And you find that word arrangement all through the Greek of the New Testament. Uh, rearranging, you find. A divine arrangement, you, you find in the Greek. Uh, a right arrangement. An alignment of arrangement that lines things up properly. If anybody has ever had a vertebrae go out, out of place in your back, then you'll sympathize with this. Yes. Because it just takes one little vertebrae to get out of alignment 
and to pinch that spinal cord, and you're going to pay attention to it. <laughs> and you're going to do anything you can in order to realign that vertebrae. And uh, that is the same with Christ. We get out of alignment every once in a while, and we have to be realigned. Life flows through a channel, and if that channel is broken by anything within our being, if we are uh, a worry wart all the time, all we do is worry, worry, worry. Are my kids safe? Uh, does my husband love me? Does my wife love me? Uh, uh, am I going to have a job next year? Uh, how am I going to pay my bills if I get sick? And people invent things to worry about. Yes. You're misaligned. If you start getting aligned in God, you're going to find out that there's peace in God, that there's joy in God. And once you get yourself lined up with him right, then that's when that can flow back and forth. The, the ladder that uh, Jacob saw that ascended into heaven and stood on the ground, and I believe it, it was a... a uh, a helix, a curved staircase is what the Greek, uh, Hebrew implies, then I believe that that is an alignment, a connection where angels were ascending and descending upon that, uh, that staircase. And angels speak of messengers, those that have words to speak of God. Uh, and, and when Jesus said to Nathaniel, I think it was, you're amazed that I saw you before you came to me, but what would you do if I told you that, uh, that I saw, uh, that when, how are you going to feel about things when you start to see angels ascending and descending from heaven to earth? And that was a, a, a reference to that very thing that Jacob saw. And it is how life flows. Now, we need to start letting God start to clean out our blocked arteries. Well, I didn't plan on going to the heart, but it's the truth. It's a spiritual thing also. Amen. When your arteries are blocked, you are going to feel a lack. You are going to feel uh, weak. You are going to feel short breath. You are not going to be running a marathon. Uh, you're diminished because of the blockages. Uh, and uh, your, your brain is going to be fuzzy. You're not going to have clearness of thought. Uh, all of those things have to do with blood that is not getting to the, to the uh, right uh, places of your body. And God is getting ready, dear ones, to clear up our blockages. What can those blockages be? Well, we know it's plaque in the natural. We know it's deposits that get deposited in our arteries from the fats and the sugars that we eat. Uh, cholesterol builds up. Cholesterol attaches itself to the walls of our arteries and veins. And uh, it starts to pile up. It starts to glue itself there, and that artery starts to become more and more constricted because of that blockage in there. And God, I believe, is cleansing us to the point where, where these things in our lives that are throttling the life of God from flowing into us and flowing through us, envy, hatred, uh, jealousy, all, all the fruits of the flesh are all cholesterol uh, 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 things if you're going to look at the natural. It is that which clogs you up. We cannot let old hurts and old wounds Amen. clog us up. Yes. We can't keep revisiting those uh, events in our life that have happened that diminished us. Amen. We have to live in the now. Yes. We have to let that go and, and bury that in God 
and let us be fresh-minded in this day of the Lord. Don't let your memories uh, deal death to you. Say goodbye to them. I believe the Lord is cutting us off from our old memories and our old events of hurt and destruction, and we are going to start living life with joy and peace and, and, and praise and worship, and we are going to be a new people. Hallelujah. I, along with all of this other that God is doing, this is the whole man message. This is the message for the whole man. It's not about what order we're entering into all the time. It's about taking what we have heard already, entering into already, and letting it have a 100% effect on us. So that where we're at right now, uh, Paul said uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that it was sufficient. He heard a voice say, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yes. And 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 Paul was had been caught up to the third heaven and on his way into that dimension uh, he had thorns of his flesh that was assaulting him and he cried out because of it and the the, the word of the Lord said my grace is sufficient for thee. Yes. And and what we have heard thus far we don't have to go inventing some other revelation. We have heard the revelation, more revelation than what we can handle right now. Right now, what we need to do is get our house in order. Yes. Is to cause the heavens to rule. Yes. In our house, hallelujah, to make sure that Jesus is sitting on the throne of our heart, hallelujah, and that he is, uh, that his uh, uh, will and purpose is our will and purpose, that we want his will in our life, that we're going to be happy and content in whatever state we find ourselves in. We are going to be steady and constant and continuous in the day of the Lord. We are going to see a way before us that the Spirit is pointing out to us and we are going to walk in that place. We're going to hear instructions from the Lord and we're not going to kick against it and we're not going to complain about it and we're not going to tell God, God, I want something more wonderful and more famous and to be seen and to be heard and instead God saying, you're the toenail. Well, toenails are going to start rejoicing over their toenailish. They're going to start rejoicing over the fact uh, that I had to convince those organs in Charlotte's body that I am a part of this body and I am going to live for the body. I am going to give life to the body. Hallelujah. And I am going to cause the body to be healed. Isaiah had it in the first chapter, I believe it was, where he said the body was full of wounds and putrefying sores and weak in every joint was was uh, 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 unstable ha kama santa da mahaya and 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 the balm of gilead is being applied to the body right now there's healing coming to everyone this is a healing of wholeness for you to become whole in the day of the lord for you not to be fractured for you not to be cut off from all your parts for you not to be distant and set aside and alone, but for you to come forth and be a part of what God's doing. This is not the time for you to set aside. This is not the time for you to enter into that dark room that you always enter into and just uh, uh, cry the blues over all the things wrong in your life. This is the time for you to come out into the light and for you to come out of your cave and for you to be uh, hear the word of the Lord that is going to send you forth again. There's a renewal coming to you. There is a fresh beginning
beginning coming to you and you need to start singing again. You need to start laughing again. You need to start getting a little dance in your feet again and start rejoicing in the midst of your enemies and start lifting up the name of the Lord in the midst of those that would disparage you and use you and abuse you. You'd let the Lord arise and let his enemies be scattered. Stand up in the day of the Lord. Let them know that you are ready for whatever he has for you. And don't relegate yourself to the realm of someone who thinks their best days are over. I'm telling you, your best days are ahead of you. I know I'm speaking to all so many of you that need to know that very fact that you have not entered into the twilight of your life. You have entered into the dawning of a new day. And this is going to be the best time, the best years of your life. Hallelujah. Who knows what God will do as we go on in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen Amen and amen. So don't let this uh, life cause you to, to veer and to get off the path. Come back into the path. Pick yourself up. I'm telling you by the word of the Lord, I'm feeling this down to my toes. Change your garments. Get out of those old dirty clothes that you have kept on yourself because they give you a certain sense of self-pity. Take off those old garments and put on fresh, new, clean garments of praise and worship and joy. Hallelujah. Wash your face. Don't let, don't go out into this world with your face looking struggled, looking painful, looking dark. Wash your face. Your expression in God is what I'm saying. Wash your face and come forth in a clean Joyful, wonderful expression of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Straighten up your, and I'm seeing this as I'm speaking it, straighten up that curved back, stooped over, uh, weighed down, and start to straighten up that back, lift your head up again, and walk as one who has authority. Hallelujah. Let there be marching orders in you, and may you you march the day of the Lord according to the cadence of God dealing in your heart. Hallelujah. We're headed somewhere, dear ones. We're coming into a place in the Lord that the world is going to want to hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right now these words are going all over the world and I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters in other lands across the seas. I I know you in my spirit. I feel you in my spirit. I want you to know that God has not left you alone. God has not left you in your own weakness. God is going to start sending help your way. God is going to start sending a word into every culture and into every nature, into every race known to man. And God is going to start to empower you. And God is going to start to show you the goodness of the Lord. Don't despair. You will see the goodness of your God. Hallelujah. He is going to supply your every need. Your meal barrel is going to never run dry in the name of the Lord. God is going to heal you of your uh, uh, diseases and God is going to cleanse your body and bring to you health. Hallelujah. As you follow on to know the Lord, as you empower him to empower you, Hallelujah. God has you in his mind. And I can see so many in my spirit across the world that are hungry for the word of the Lord and for the truth of the kingdom. Yes. And, 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 and eat of the Lord, dear ones. Eat of the Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to, to avail yourself to those ministries that are speaking life into you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this is a day of healing, 
of restoration. Take advantage of it. Yes. Mention the name of the Lord. Yes. May the Lord be glorified in you. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I believe I'm done. If anyone else has anything to say or do, uh, please do so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Fill the house with your glory, O Lord. Andaramandara masando Grand and mighty God Grand it, O oh Lord According to your divine wisdom, O oh mighty God Hallelujah Hallelujah. Oh, we minister the Christ into each one, Lord. Hallelujah. Bring forth your royal diadem, oh mighty God. Crown us with life everlasting, O oh Lord. This is our appointed hour in the Lord. Come awake, all ye that slumber, and present yourself to the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Bless your name. Anyone else have anything? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just feeling like the Lord is speaking life to Pauletta. I just feel that the Lord is really moving. Yes. Right Pauletta, uh, we hadn't mentioned her. I'm sorry for that, but uh, she's not here because she's sick this morning. And uh, we need God to touch her. I just feel life flowing to her right now. Amen. Bobby Jean's feeling life flowing into you Pauletta so be made be made whole in the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah but we miss Pauletta you gonna come minister Zach okay I think this will reach but I don't know Pops always said the Lord keeps us from getting too Dignified, so. Yeah. Let me cut this back on. I said, Bob had said that the Lord always keeps us from uh, Looking professional. getting too dignified. So I was back there with a word in my spirit and it spilled my coffee all over my shirt. So. <laughs> but I figured, you know what? I had to stick true to what the Lord gave me. And thankfully, it's just a little bit and pretty quick. <laughs> You're right. So uh, I'm going to try to get the pulpit here and stand up books to hide it and do all we can uh, do. <laughs> No, that's and what, uh, <laughs> right. At least my teeth hadn't fallen out like Bob, so we're good to go. Oh wait, no, that might have been Dale. <laughs> Y'all said sorry. <laughs> but 
Bob's had other things, not his teeth fly. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, in all seriousness here, what a what an atmosphere this morning. I was just thinking really quick. Uh, it hit me in my spirit <clears throat> as uh, we were singing and worshiping. A couple things I, I was feeling uh, exactly what what Bob was saying. A little bit of spirit, uh, like you said, almost a prophetic thing, not the prophecy people tend to get. Because you know, people start to uh, seek after prophecy like they do the things Bob were talking about the natural as a way as a medium to know the future to get an answer to a question and they want to go to a meeting and get a prophecy so they know where they stand with God well I don't believe that's really where God intended prophecy to be a gift of um, even if it is an answer from the Lord prophecy is about leading a people into a place and having an understanding of where we're going or being able to see into a person's heart and knowing what God's getting ready to do in their life so that we can participate in that, so that we can instruct and guide in that, not so that we can have a drawing to a gift or to a, right. uh, a thing. And, and part of that, I believe, comes from people's lack of uh, trust sometimes or lack of ability to truly connect with God themselves, which really is the message we're ministering, yes. is to have that personal relation, yes. relationship with God. Um, I'm not looking for another man to guide me. Now, now hear me on that. Again, as Bob said earlier, let's have balance. Uh, we need counsel. I need instruction. I, I ask questions at times. But I'm not counting on my relationship with God being through another priest or a bishop or a, a leader that I have to get through to understand what God's doing in my life. Right. And so I began to see something, and, and, and I didn't mean to get into that, but just talking about prophecy, as I was worshiping and ministering, uh, in my spirit, they, I began to see that, that, and it was funny as Bob just went right over into the outpouring of the spirit, that I just saw that energy and that life begin to raise up in a people to where it's beginning to be ministered out of a people. Yes. Because how many knows the spirit's what gives life? This mortal body would not be living without a spirit in it. Amen. I know we think uh, that there's studies of biology and organic chemistry and certain yes. chemicals can create life. There's nothing that can stay alive without a spirit in it. Yeah. I believe that. I don't understand all of it. I don't know how because as Bob said, there's instances where that spirit leaves the body and it has an impact on it. There's been uh, uh, talks of visitations where a person, not even as Bob had to where it kind of um, doesn't necessarily cause his body to pass away, but his body's impacted by it. But we've heard of visitations to where people don't even know, but their spirits went out and visited others. Yes. Um, and what it begins to speak to me is the complexity of this dimension. That's what really I want to get to for a second. Is this dimension we're heading to is the very place that Jesus Christ not only abides in now, yes. but birthed in the beginning in Him that has a higher dominion over the place that before Christ appeared on the earth, if a person laid their body down, they went into a certain place. Amen. As now, if we lay our body down, some of us go into different places, if you will. Yes. Yeah. Not that it's hell or heaven, as they talk about, but different experiences and different existence based off that encounter we've had with the spirit of life. <laughs> The spirit that gives life, Jesus' spirit, we were produced from that spirit, and that spirit within us gives us life, but it draws off that life of the spirit of Christ. See, that's what I was seeing as Bob was talking about it being awakened to. See, the spirit of Christ deals with all humanity as it is right now, whether they're aware of it or unaware of it. Christ has all that in the palm of his hand, orchestrating a plan of the ages, yes. moving things, rearranging things, as Bob said, not only in us, but outside of us both. But we know for us, all we can focus on in our part of the plan is what's, in with the, what's inside of us. Yes. But we see that Jesus is orchestrating things all around us, all the time. Amen. Whether it's what they call organic chemistry or inorganic. God uses things that we consider to be alive in the natural sense or things that we consider to be dead to get all these things rearranged into their appropriate place. And so I was seeing that, that as, as it's become um, a, a, a place in the kingdom even to where we seek the next thing, we have already come into contact that which brings us into the fullness. Yeah. And I know that people have taken that into a place of already obtaining grace and perfection and all these things, or I mean through grace already pertaining, uh, obtaining perfection, but we are apprehending yeah. as a verb that speaks of ongoing 
that which we've been called for. It is a process that we're entering into life through the life of Jesus Christ. And without that life, we don't have life, even in the physical. And that's what I began to see is that there's a connection through these realms that, as it said, Jesus, as he laid his natural body down, went into that place of the dead and ministered to those people that were in a spiritual realm that was not natural, but also was not where Jesus was on the other side. He called them unto that place. So we begin to see that there's these experiences and levels. And as Bob said, we don't want to get off to where we're chasing these things and seeing these things as something that gets us unbalanced because we are with our feet on terra firma. But what we know is even in this present physical reality, there is a spiritual reality that we are partaking in that's right in the midst of it all. That's right in the midst of that place that they call Sheo or Hades or the grave that's right in the midst of this place we call earth, this natural experience, that's right in the midst of the place that all these levels that Paul would have visited, Jesus is a present in all those realms. However, Jesus is in a realm within those realms. He's in a place that visits all those places because he is the very essence that things were birthed out of, the very thing that gave life to all these realms. And now we are pressing into the place that we call the Holy of Holies or the, the, the whatever we're going to give it terminology for. But the most holy place in Jesus Christ is where we're walking into isn't a place out there or a place that doesn't have um, openings for all humanity. It's a place that Jesus has walked into up out of himself he began to manifest this as an availability to creation. When he laid down his body and separated his spirit from a natural body, he opened up that door that was that veil that gave access to us to have a more greater place, a more excellent way to walk in. Because before that, there was only the place of the law, this outer experience. And even as Jesus laid his body down, it doesn't mean on 2022 Uh, 2022 years ago, creation walked into the fullness. What it means is there was a veil rent so that mankind can begin to walk into a place of fullness, into wholeness. And we see these moves of God. And what struck me as Bob began to talk about Pentecost, we know that even before Pentecost, Martin Luther had the, the, just that awakening of that very thing I was just talking about, which is still something we preach. Man having his own relationship with God, seeking God face to face. And even though it wasn't as dramatic of an encounter as Pentecost became to where it was this heavy spiritual uh, experience, it was this awareness that rose up in the people of that day that said, you know what? We don't go through people to get to God. We come face to face with the Father. And then we know in the early 1900s, that spirit began to pour up out of them and began to minister through them. And I was thinking that uh, about this as I visited Josh Gwinnup out in um, L.A. for a meeting that we went out and visited that Bonnie Bray house out there by Azusa Street where that revival began before they got the Azusa Street building. And the thing that swept the people at that day. And again, we start to think that as Bob referenced the scriptures, you know, we think sometimes I've heard people say that, man, if God moved like he moved in the Old Testament and did these miraculous things, well, you know, God was doing that. That was only a hundred years ago. (laughs) The latter rain wasn't even a hundred years ago yet. We often forget the power and glory that's been seen that's not that long ago. Amen. There are people alive today still that saw that latter rain movement. And again, hear me on this with balance. We're not talking about going back to a visitation. I'm talking about understanding where we're at today in the unveiling of Christ within creation. Yes. Because that's what those moves are. Those revelations of Jesus in a people are the unveiling glory after glory in a people that gets built upon. And and in his Pentecost at that Bonnie Bray house, they literally had, and what's interesting to me, as we see a a nation that is so uh, divided on many political fronts and racial fronts and socioeconomical fronts and all the different things that divide people, is the African-American community was the one that really God began to move in early on in the Pentecost. And they had an outpouring over in wells in different areas and different hotspots. But in Azusa Street, or again, Bonnie Bray house, there was a group of African-Americans that began to join and God began to move in that people. Yes. And and I don't know why I'm saying this, but you best believe there was probably 
a tension between some of the churches of the whites that began yes. to point fingers at what was going on and didn't see it as the spirit of God. But you know, there were some that began to be in tune with the spirit and said, you know what? We're going to join that right there. Yes. There began to be waves of white people, black people, Hispanic people joining at Bonnie Bray's house in a spirit of unity yes. as they had and they ministered on in the upper room yes. that they saw there's a spirit of God present, yes. not of white, black, uh, women, men, any of that stuff that began to dissipate as they saw something present there. Praise they li literally began to collapse the porch on that house Praise to where they had to go get a bigger building. <laughs> but it wasn't about numbers. They weren't taking up offerings every day. Right. They were there praying and ministering for hours, yes. Yes. just basking in the glory of Jesus, basking in the glory of the spirit of the Lord. That's what happened in Saskatchewan in the latter rain. Yes. It became about having that experience in God. Not about drawing crowds or making money or profiting it by selling books and writing. And I best believe God's going to use all that. We're going to write books. We're going to do newsletters. We're going to have meetings. But it's about the experience and the encounter in the midst of those. Amen. Amen. And that's what happened is that God visited a people and God's not stopped visiting people. Amen. That's what I want you to hear this morning. Yes. We're not looking to recreate something that happened or looking for something going to happen. We're looking for a present daily experience yes. from a visitation of the Lord. That's that same visitation he had to people that laid their body down in that place of Sheol. That same life-giving spirit yes. that visited them after Jesus laid his body down is visiting our deadly creation today. Yes. Even if we've come alive in Christ, we have places in us whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is, that Christ is still visiting daily, yes. bringing and calling into the life of Christ. Yes. See, that is the kingdom. When I heard the message, there was something that rose up in me. Yes. And even though I believe as a whole, I was no longer dead in sins and trespasses, there were still parts of me as Bob ministered on those organs. Yes. How many knows that it's so true today that we have organs within us not willing to live Amen. Amen. physically? Yes. But also emotionally, spiritually, we are a complex being, as he yes. said, to where even emotionally I have parts of myself. Amen. I have a part of me that was a child that may have been wounded right. that still doesn't trust God because how would God let that happen to me? And even though mentally as an adult and spiritually I've grown and we say, well, just trust the Lord. The scripture says, <laughs> da, da, da. There are people that... And I say people, myself, there's still some parts of me that say, well, I can trust God for all this. But as Bob said, I don't know if God may heal this Amen. because we don't see God doing that. So we put to, begin to put God in a little box yes. and begin to not intentionally discredit right. or to take away the power. Right. But we begin to say, well, we've not seen God do that. So we're going to stay over here and keep doing what we see God doing. See, that's how moves begin to be bound. Yes. Whether it was Pentecost, latter rain, as men begin to say, okay, this is what God's doing. He's prophesying. He's speaking in tongues, as Bob said, doing prayer lines. So this is what Pentecost is. See, God had so much more for that outpouring. Yes. Yes. But God already knew in his wisdom man was going to limit it yes. and begin to get involved with it. Yes. But see, tabernacles, this outpouring that we're ministering on is one to where we stop getting in God's way and in his business <laughs> to where he could complete that outpouring of himself up in us. Yes. And I say within us, because again, it's not what's going to happen on the outside. It's what's happening on the inside. Yes. And that's what I was seeing is all that visitation that's still happening. See, all these scriptures, all these stories begin to speak life to us when we begin to see that these are eternal truths that are never not going to be applicable to where we're at in God. Right. There's always something in there. That's why, as Bob said, I believe in preaching out of the Bible. I've never found another book that's encapsulating. I may read something that another uh, brother's written or a sister's written and reference it, but it's not what I preach out of as a whole. Amen. And even as we use uh, different things that expand on the Bible, because again, as, as the teaching of the reading room does, is it takes that which we study and expands on it. Yes. See, how many knows that's what God's doing in this hour? Yes. Is He's expanding on those things that have been placed within us. Yes. We're not just focused on getting more and more and more placed within us. As Bob said, it's rearrangement and expanding on yes. that, which has been implanted that we have not even begun to come into yet. Yes. So again, human, we want more, 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 more. Give me, give me, give me. Because we need distraction from that, which is going on. So we need to focus on tomorrow. Right. Or what's going to happen in God 
or what's coming. But we have to focus on what's here today. Yes. But be awakened to the fact that tomorrow God can expand on that. Yes. See, that's the difference of what we preach and what we believe. And again, kingdom's not a doctrine for us. And I usually don't speak for, for others, but I know that I'm with a group of people that kingdom's not a doctrine. It's a life. It's a reality. Yes. And life ever, ever evolves and it grows and you have a relationship with life. Yes. See, life's not a dead thing. As it said, the letter killeth, and I know it could be talking about scripture or writing, but I'm talking about this dead letter can kill it if we just let it be a suke experience or, a, or even a physical experience. But the spirit of life gives life. Yes. It begins to expand on those things. Yes. And I was thinking that as, um, see, there was something that uh, struck me about a movie, and maybe you guys have seen this one, and, and I'm going to try to kind of land it here a little bit, but it was a, a movie with Reese Weatherspoon called Just Like Heaven. I don't know if anybody's seen that, where she goes into a coma. And uh, it was probably an older movie, 2006, I don't remember when, but I'd never seen it. And uh, she goes into a coma. Well, you don't know that at the beginning of the movie. The guy uh, moves into this apartment, and this lady shows up and says, what are you doing in my house? And he says, well, I've started renting it. What do you mean I live here? She says, this is my house. Well, then they come to find out it's her ghost visiting while she's in that coma, it's her, her, they call it ghost, her spirit, her whatever that's left that body and interacting. And it began to speak something to me about that same thing Bob just said. You know, they show that in movies, these things that we call, and some Christians may say, well, that's like kind of out there. There is a universal knowledge that there is a complexity to humans that's not just a physical being. Amen. And again, not that we begin to chase those things, but we begin to know that God is going to use our spirit even if it's outside our body at times, to accomplish and complete the work of the Lord. Amen. But also what struck me about that movie is that her body was there in a coma and the spirit hadn't been fully released to leave that realm. It began to interact in it because that body is so, the spirit is so tied to the body and there's a complexity that again, I can't begin to explain, but that there's a, a, a glue that our spirit has to our body as we're alive is what we call life on this natural side. Yes. There is a connection there between our spirit and our body that as we lay this physical body down, our spirit is released unto a realm that again, I believe those of us that have begun to walk into this place in Jesus comes into a certain knowledge and a certain experience into this place, but everybody walks into something. And again, it may be that experience that um, is looking into this place yeah. or we may be entering into that place where Jesus is. But again, it's not for our spirit just to focus on doing that when we lay our body down. That's the message. It's our focus to allow our spirit and our, natu or our uh, whole man, as was said, to begin to walk into this place Jesus is at right now while we're on earth. That's what the full manifestation of the sons of God are, is a people that have come into wholeness. But again, it's not to do that out of order or out of place. See, that's what I was hearing too, that rearranging. That's divine order. That's things being in their right place. See, that's God's business when that change happens. And we should minister on it at times, and we should remind ourselves and remind everyone of what is happening because that is happening right now. We are being transformed yes. into his image and likeness. Yes. Right now, in this present moment, we are being transformed. We are being set free of things that hold us down, those blockages that were talked about, so that we can begin to have that blood, that life of Christ within us, flow freely through this vessel. Because yes. we are that vessel of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are that vessel that allows blood to flow through to the body. Yes. We carry a life within us, yes. but if we are blocked, it restricts that flow. Yes. See, that's what I see is that that awakening that happens in Christ as we call it being filled with the spirit or coming alive or all the words that we use. There is that point where boom, we become aware of it, but then there's a growing up into it. Yes. Cause again, see even Pentecost became about, are you filled with the spirit or are you not filled with the spirit? First day, are you baptized or are you not baptized? Yes. We're not looking just to be baptized or just to be filled with the Spirit. 
we are looking to be transformed by those things. Because I need the blood. I need that baptism of the Lord yeah. to cleanse my heart. Yeah. And I need to be filled with the Spirit. Yes. But not just to, to do things or to build things or to show things off to people, but to be made whole. Yes. Those are those steps. See, there's an eternal progression in God. Without His blood, you can't be made whole. Amen. Without salvation, there is no way to come into tabernacles. Amen. Right. Without His Spirit being involved... There is no way to become one and one, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, Amen. without having our spirit and his spirit resonating, yes. communicating. Yes. And our spirit, our, my spirit, resonating with your spirit. See, yes. Tabernacles isn't just about us becoming whole with Jesus. It's about Jesus becoming whole with his body. Yes. Yes. About me coming into communion with him, coming into communion with you, and we together coming into communion with the body. Yes. That's where we're at. Yeah. That feast of boost, that feast of entwinement. Yeah. That's where we're at. That's not just a message, a doctrine. That's a living, breathing reality. Yes. Yes. And that's how I was seeing is to be so much more aware of what's in the midst of us. Because I think we could have strayed a little bit too far from where we were at on post-Pentecostal outpouring to where we could actually get back to where some things become so first day and doctrinal and knowledgeable and so much about do's and don'ts and this is how we do it, that we can lose some of that freeness in the spirit yes. that Bob was talking about. That in the moment where we get out of character because we associate that with Pentecost. See, Pentecost isn't a bad thing. Uh, um, salvation, first day experience, isn't a bad thing. No. It's just if you stay there, and continue and not continue to grow into the fullness of God, that's where it becomes out of order or out of place. Yes. Hallelujah. So I feel that God is moving us into a place to where we no longer chase these things in a limited realm because I, I, I did want to touch on this, that as Bob said, there is a power in the natural man and even in kingdom. And that's really what new age really is at an essence is about kind of capitalizing on the sp uh, skills of the, the, the soul and the psyche yeah. and, and energies and things. And although there is a truth in that, there is energy that flows throughout all the earth. And even in my body, if I were to do something like um, exercise or yoga, it's going to release tension and energy and clear out my body of things that are, that are caught up in it. That is a truth. That is just not the truth. That is not... Right. Uh, all that God is is an energy, a universal energy that flows. Right. Now, I believe that's something that was produced up out of Christ that, again, has a spiritual reality if you begin to study it. There is Christ present in all, but that's an intangible, not just an a atomic thing that we can measure. But I was seeing, and I saw this documentary too, that uh, just to, to kind of end, because this is, I, I appreciate that Bob said this because I said it a while back around the culture that's building around mediums and things going on. Um, and again, we can just write it off to say, well, that's not Christian, you know, put a cross against it and don't do it. But how do we begin to talk about us, talk about things? How do we give counsel? How do we explain why? Again, I tell people at work, if we're going to change or do something, talk about the why. And if we don't know why, we should ask ourselves that. Amen. So again, we shouldn't just go, somebody said, this is good, this is bad, this is a list of rules. We should seek and, uh, seek and study things out. But the why is... Because exactly what Bob said, it's only a partial truth. Just like the serpent in the garden, there could be some truth in these things, but they mislead us. And some of it's not even pure evil. Some of it's just unperfected things that are trying to um, interact with this realm. And I'm just speaking from the cuff here because I don't know all the language for it, but it's uh, things that are partially finished that sometimes don't have just evil intentions, but it's not the truth. You get lost in it. Stuff. It's just stuff that can be very wrong and confuse people's minds. And I was actually, uh, again, watching a video about the CIA did studies uh, during the Cold War. And actually, this is one thing that Russia and United States uh, partnered up on, even in the midst of the Cold War, that was called the practice of seeking a remote viewing, which is a psychological skill to have me in a room and me actually be telling you what's going on miles away. And, you know, they began to study people that had this ability, and they would sit there and literally draw things as things were going on a couple miles away. And obviously it was trying to be used as a military tactic 
that there are truths that people have psychological abilities that we can't explain. Amen. So again, as we start to talk about spiritual things that happen that we can't explain, people are starting to readily accept psychological things that can't be explained and are getting themselves lost in those things. Yes. Again, mediums are becoming a popular thing. And again, it's not just that we have to go to the good old religious mindset of uh, it's sin and everything's bad. It's to begin to explain to a people why. What, what's, the, what's the harm or the good or the bad? Um, again, if they're not the spirit of the Lord that gave life to all things, they don't have the full truth in them. Amen. Um, they can become misleading. Yes. So let us, and, and, and as Bob said, we're not trying to conjure up other spirits, but I'm trying to wrap it in with this statement of why I got into some of that. As I believe we're getting ready to I hate to use that word as that different, but to conjure up the spirit of the Lord in ways that may not have been done before that produces moves, produces life-changing events that allows that life to flow up out of us, to allow that spirit to be present in the room with us, in the midst of us, and to be felt by somebody that enters that, that room. Right. I believe that as they had in Pentecost, people were drawn to that. Again, this isn't about a numbers thing, but there's a, there is becoming a manifestation that again is going to draw all men unto himself. Yes. As men begin to make it known, though, this is the Lord's business. Yes. This is the Lord's work. Yes. This isn't us at the house of the Lord or this church group or this people or this person. But we are allowing the Lord to manifest and to be uh, made known and put on display so that all men can come into that spirit. So that men can come into contact as we put that ark on display that men has an answer to their problems. That they no longer have to live in sin and death and trespasses, but that they can become alive in Christ as we have been made to come alive. That is our mission. That is our calling. Not to preach the kingdom doctrine or the gospel of, of Jesus just in the message of it. But to make it a life in a reality due to the spirit of life that's within it. Because that's where all those words came in those scriptures, all those stories came from. All the songs we sing, all the things we do should be moved and influenced by the spirit of life. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, that's the difference. Yes. Again, not the spirit of the soul realm, the spirit of the natural realm. Those things are gonna be moved by the spirit of the life within us. Our natural realm and our soulish realm are going to be influenced and changed by those things. And it's going to move our emotions. It's going to heal our physical bodies. Yes, yes. But we can't get it out of order. No, no. <laughs> it starts in the spirit and touches our natural man. Which if you look at the divide, the spirit and the natural, typically the natural speaks of that soul and natural intertwined. And then you have your spirit. But the whole man is where those things are married in that marriage that it talks about in Revelation to where it's one thing. It's a unity there. So that's the other part of tabernacles is, again, it's not just me and God, but how does my soul, spirit, and body, as was said earlier, become whole and well? That's our focus right now. That is really what kingdom is about. It's about kingship and priesthood, being able to topple over those things within us that remain unchanged, that aren't crying Abba Father and crying out to be changed by the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what kingship is for. Yeah. Not to rule and reign over people. And I was thinking about this and uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to get through this here, but the Lord keeps just, uh, again, expanding on this as we're, we're uh, celebrating Father's Day in the natural. See, the mother part of God is that, that, that true church realm of nurturing and protecting and covering um, but that father side is that, that side that, that gets a hold of us, that, that puts that correction out there. And again, there are some that have gotten into kingdom and in um, uh, different orders that begin to come so focused on that dominance piece of the kingship and the, or the sonship or the thing that's going to uh, make us feel powerful and start toppling things that we lose that balance in Christ. Because there's a fatherhood and a motherhood there. That one without the other, again, if it's all church and just a mother raising us and no father, we don't begin to overcome these things. But again, if we start to realize we have a father and all we are is kings now, we can begin, we can begin to lose that nurturing part of us. Yes. So let us celebrate that fatherhood in the spirit. Yes. 
That dominion that's given to us as kings of the Most High, that, that um, or no, we didn't sing that song, we sang something else, but that kingdom and dominion song, let us celebrate and rejoice in that, yes. but also let us nurture and grow up in that. Yes. That's the complexity and the balance. Yes. And that's why we have to be led by the Spirit of the Lord because all those other things we get caught in, yes. again, if our psychological realm begins to obtain things of the kingdom and of the Spirit, and begins to try to build something with it, it begins to be misleading. Whether intentional or unintentionally, right. it begins to get things out of order. Yes. That's why we have to be apprehended by the Spirit yes. and follow the Spirit of the Lord yes. and know how to hear the Spirit of the Lord, know how to give witness to it, and again, not need another man, woman, child to tell us what's the Lord and what's not the Lord. Yes. Again, to have connection and communion there where we trust one another, yes. but to also have confidence that you're being led by the Lord and I'm being led by the Lord. Yes. And we're hearing from the same spirit. That's how we get the witness of it. Yes. See, all the moves that have disagreed, it's because they're not being led by the Lord. Amen. Because this one says this, that one says that, and then they both dissipate and change over time. The move of God has never dissipated. Let me tell you, people, you can think groups have split off, things have changed, things have done away with, now the kingdom's this, Pentecost, that the spirit of the Lord has always been moving in a people. Since before he came to the earth, yes. while he was on the earth, once he laid his body down, the Lord's ministry and move has always been happening. Yes. It never changes. It's that light beam that's constant. Yes. And we can either stay in that, as was said earlier, or we can drift away from that. But if you feel like you've drifted away, I call you this morning to come back into that, yes. into that presence of the Lord, yes. into his message, yes. his glory, his life, his words. Yes. Because again, we can get caught into messages along the way or things along the way and become distracted and begin to claim our stake there and begin to create death and not life in us and in people around us. Yes. And even if you didn't intend to get there, we got to be humble enough to say, you know what, I'm human and I accidentally got there. Yes. Yes. I missed the mark on that one. Yes. That's what repentance is. Yes. Again, first day messages that we think are so elementary we still need in the kingdom. Oh, yes. Let us repent and come back to our father yes. as some may be that lost child yes. that has drifted off from the father's house, yes. went to do their own business and their own thing. Right. Let us be the one, the prodigal son that comes home on this father's yes. day and says, let me be about my father's business. Yes. Amen. Let me get back in line with what God's doing in the earth and get out of my knowledge and my skills and my ministry and come into his ministry. Because this isn't about the, the ministry of the Reagan or Taranjos or any of that. It's about the ministry of the Lord. Jesus. Yes. <clears throat> yes, isn't about the meeting in October. It isn't about uh, any other meeting we have, about the Facebook, about YouTube. Those are going to be tools that the Lord uses to carry it out. But see what's within those things. Yes, Let that resonate with you. Yes. Hopefully... It is witnessing to something that's already within you. Yes. Again, that is just the voice we are trying to resonate to call that up out of you or to keep it expanding. Or if you have missed the mark in some way, call you back into the path. But it's the Lord's voice that does that. Yes. He is the one that, that, that herds the sheep. Yes. He is the shepherd. Yes. All these things we could get into. It's the Father's message. And what did Jesus say more than anything? I am about my father's business. Yes. That was his mission. Yes. Not to build a church, a doctrine, a religion, any of that. Right. His goal was not to build a Christian religion. To be honest, his goal was to give the message of what his father sent him to do. Yes. <laughs> That's what we are about. Yes. Not to build a kingdom religion or a doctrine, right. but to give the, father, uh, the father's message. So that our sisters and brothers could have life. Yes. Because without that message being ministered, and that's what I saw as I was worshiping, that's actually becoming ministered up out of us yes. to where there's a power and a glory there yes. to where it's touching people. It's having an effect on people. That breath effect is coming up out of us oh. to begin to move things that couldn't be moved otherwise. Yeah. Amen. Again, not just to produce physical healings or soulish healings, but to actually cause change yes. where change couldn't be had otherwise. Amen. See, God used all those other things just to show evidence that he's moving in the earth yes. and to bless his people. Yes. 
That's the same thing Jesus said, as I did these things. But this isn't the more excellent way. <laughs> but something had to happen. Yes. Or God chose it to happen, whichever one you want to say it, yes. to begin to demonstrate his power and glory. Yes. And even then people still questioned sure. what's going to happen today. People are going to question what we're saying, what we're doing. But let that not be an insecurity within us to change or deviate from what we're saying or doing. Yes. Because maybe somebody decided to no longer be a part of. So not let, don't let us change to keep a number in a seat there no. or to keep an offering coming or getting the beat. See, that's what they do in business today, and churches do that. They get polls. They get numbers. See, if we were running a business here, we would be on YouTube and Facebook seeing which, which messages hit the peaks, where they tuned out at, what they engaged in. That's how you market to people. That's what your Facebook does to you all day long. Whatever video you watch, it's going to keep that type of video coming. Yeah. On Amazon, whatever you buy, it's going to suggest 20 other things that are like it, so you keep spending your money. <laughs> this isn't a marketing scheme to move the kingdom forward. No. But we are going to promote the Father's message. Yes. <laughs> and let that do the business. Yes. Let that do the speaking. Yes. Let that go where it needs to go. Yes. Because in all reality, we don't understand where all that message needs to go. Our job is to minister it as we receive it and let the Lord do the business at that point. Because yes. we can't make someone be ready for it. We can't make it take effect. No. I am sure Bob wanted this to take effect in me and some of the other grandkids long before it ever took effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We want it to take effect in our family members right now yes. that we can't make it happen. No. We don't have as much power. If we want to talk about kingship and priesthood, we don't have as much kingship as we think we have sometimes. No. I wish we did. Amen. But that's not to beat us down. No. But that's to say we are getting there. Yes. We are becoming like our Father. We are growing up in our Father. Yes. So that we can... But again, that's how I see it. It's not going to be that we have obtained this and then we're going to go into meetings and say they're right, they're wrong, let us change the order, let us do that. We have to be led by the Spirit. Yes. But that Spirit leading us is going to change the order in some places. Yes. In a person's life, yes. in meetings we join, yes. in groups, in our heavens, in our earth, yes. it is going to begin to rearrange some things that we couldn't have rearranged otherwise. Yes. But it takes wisdom to be able to hear the Spirit, yes. see in the Spirit, know in the Spirit. Again, that's what Pentecost was for, to begin to teach us the things of the Spirit, to begin to learn how to move in the Spirit. But we have to grow up in that. Right. It can't be just the basic childish things in the Spirit. Again, if we're talking about leaving our body and visiting other people's bodies, or if we're talking about leaving and visiting other groups, or if we're talking about whatever it is that's a supernatural event, yes. we better be balanced and have some wisdom, yes. or God's not going to continue it in our life. Amen. Right. Because children are not going to run the kingdom. It says mature sons are going to run the kingdom, are going to apprehend those keys yes. that have the power over hell, death, and the grave. Those keys are going to be given, or that rod of iron is going to be given yes. to a man-child that's fully manifested, a move that's not childish anymore, Amen. that's not lackadaisical in the Spirit of God. And even in that realm or in that spirit, but that knows how to operate these things yes, sir. and doesn't go promoting. Again, come see Bob on Tuesday night. He's going to leave his body and come visit you. <laughs> That's what Pentecost would do. Yeah. They would say, Bob's got a gift there now. We're going to sell a book on it. And we're going to make some money off of it and come see the wonderful Bob and Bob's ministry. See, you know, that's what would happen is they'd hang their hat on Bob's ministry being yeah. that. Yes, yes. That he's a visitor or a wanderer. <laughs> But our ministry yes. is to minister the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. So I just, I could keep going probably all day on the things of God. I'm too excited. Um, <laughs> love the people of God. I guess we could probably uh, end on this note here. So I thank you all for tuning in. Um, more to come. Myself, I'm actually going to be out the uh, uh, next couple of weeks. But Bob and Bobby Jean and I know... 
Paulette is out one weekend, but I know if she's filling up to it, she'll be in in some, so service will go on, but I just personally would say that you probably won't see me for a couple weeks due to family vacation and uh, letting Roman go visit his grandparents as he's turning one tomorrow. Um, so, so I'll have, have fun with that, but I love everyone. Um, hopefully we have some uh, fellowship soon um, and be encouraged. That's what I felt this morning is, is, is be encouraged by what our Father's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you everyone and we'll see you next week.